Welcome to Ancient Future Technologies, where we give you the tools to access the past, tap into the future, and fully activate the now. Within the inner reaches of outer space, the portals are now open. From the apex of the pyramid, it's your host, Ankara Akiru. If you'd like to connect and co-create with us, please visit CosmicRootsCreations.com where you have access to free guided meditations, handcrafted crystal synergy tools, online trainings, and other innovative ancient future technologies. Welcome to our tribe. Today's guest is Ross Ben, who is a self-published author of four publications, including Rocks of Ages, Great Mystery Philadelphia, and Urban Act of Magic, Free Your Mound and Your Mind Will Follow, and 5G Wellness 101. He's also an astrologist, body worker, humble servant, and ancient crystal keeper. Please welcome Ross Ben. Ross Ben, welcome to the show. Thank yes. Thanks for joining me today on Ancient Future Technologies podcast. Much love, bro. Yeah, I appreciate you uh, taking your time out today to <clears throat> share with us some of your insights. And, um, you know, you and I met uh, quite some time ago a little bit over 10 years ago out in Asheville yeah. and um, it's been a real pleasure building with you and uh, learning from we, from you and, and just growing with you, man. It's, 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 you know, what it is that you're bringing to the world. Yes, I, yeah, man, it's been a journey and uh, yeah, we met up at, uh, I think it was called deer, the deer fields or something, but it was a real mystic, experience and uh yeah man we've just been building from that point this this you know each one teach one in this season you know yeah that's it man we actually we were introduced to uh a very good brethren brother ross naeem davis and yeah. uh he he's actually one of one of uh my teachers and you know building these these ancient future technologies and you know, coming forward with uh, the crystal consciousness. So, yeah, I really give thanks for that, you know, that honor to be able to meet up with you and Ross Ben and just, you know, see where we're at here 10 years later still building. True. One thing I wanted to visit before we talk about our recent, your re- recent publication is a topic uh, that you pinpoint in your earliest book, Rocks of Ages which is uh, the topic of urban geomancy. Can you tell us the meaning of urban geomancy and how it is utilized by the powers that be in modern time? Yes, sir. Yeah, I do. Uh, build, I started building on it in Rocks of Ages, but, <laughs> you know, my latest work for your mound and your mind will follow. It, it really is a... a, a in-depth focus on geomancy and it's basically manipulating the magnetic fields of the earth to impel behavior you know and uh shape consciousness information and life force energy is exchanged in creation and in nature through the magnetic spectrum and, you know, you look in nature, uh, migratory animals, uh, animals with circadian or cyclical rhythms, all of them tune into the magnetic field, you know? So ones that want to deal with what you might call that occult level of control, that's what they're dealing with, manipulating that magnetic field and our connection to it. And they build cities in such a way that they can can manipulate our relationship to the magnetic fields and influence our behavior, you know? So that's, so when you see those bizarre statues, like something, you'd be like, yo, what the hell is that? Or, you know, a building that's a replica of Parthenon or, you know, some crazy obelisk, you know, that's the intention behind those things, you know? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I wanted to share something with you because I was just out at the 
Denver Gem and Mineral Show, you know, which we linked up at a couple of years back for uh, the Crystal Cannabis Tour. But um, I decided to go down in the afternoon before I was flying out to um, check out like the little Capitol Park or whatever, where there's the Capitol building and then there's a big Green Parkway and there's all these different statuaries and things. And there's also uh, a federal building Hmm. Like right right uh in the parkway you know and um right in the very center of the parkway is this big obelisk it's a big stone obelisk and it's like a it's a war memorial obelisk and um just in front of the obelisk like on the um in the pavement in the like stone pathway there was this big like pisces vesica hmm. that was like right in front and then I stood in front of it and like it was the, the city hall was in one direction and there was a Capitol building in the other direction and this obelisk right in the very center. And I took out my uh, compass on my phone and I looked, you know, I dialed it in and it was like perfectly aligned to east and west. Yes. And then like in inside of the, the parkway, there was all these different statuaries, but I just want to share with you two of the most interesting ones because there was many, but, you know, I also want to, you know, feature, feature more of your work, but essentially you taught me about tapping into this understanding. And so I, I just got really excited because, you know, when I was there, I was really like, um, I remember when we, we were in Miami, you, you know, asked us to learn more about our city. And even though Denver's not my city, I just had a moment to really tap into what they got going on there. And it was just so obvious. It was just so plain right in your face. And they had a, um, in front of the, the federal courthouse building, there was uh, statues of these uh, like tribal uh, indigenous peoples. And they were like in a council circle with, there was like some children and then a grandmother or a mother, uh, like she, she was sitting there holding these, uh, like books. It was like the book of laws, you know? Yeah. And then the children were like looking up at the, at the federal court building, like in kind of like amazement or in wonder. And, you know, it was just like, to me, I just immediately tapped into how like this was, it was showing us how they don't, they can't even really control the laws that it's the indigenous people of the lands that actually are the holders of that, those laws and actually are true to the, the laws of nature and of the land. And it was just, you know, it was so deep because there were so many of these different little like symbols and signs inside of the, the art in that parkway that, you know, I just, I, I was, amazed and also like just really you know opened my eyes to more of this this aspect of the urban geomancy so um yeah just i i appreciate you sharing that that ability to start to decipher some of these you know signs and symbols that are really right in front of us yeah man it's very important in this time it's got to be 2020 and 2020 brah <laughs> Clear vision, you know, clear vision, yeah. brethren. Yeah, man. Brilliant future for for us and our families coming forward. So um, I wanted to get into um, into the great mystery Philadelphia. You know, it's one of your newest publications, and in the the title is sort of a play on a biblical term, great mystery Babylon. And so I'm hoping you could like share with this or draw some parallels between the the modern city of Philadelphia and the, the ancient city of Babylon for us. Yeah, man. Well, I will start by saying that, right, Washington, D.C. is the political capital of this country. And many would say New York is the uh, media economic and commercial capital of this nation. But uh, I, I would say Philadelphia, from what I've observed, I would say Philadelphia is the spiritual nation, spiritual capital of this nation. 
Mm, right? Okay. Beyond being the place of its birth, Philadelphia acts as a foundry. And what you'll find is like, you know, what, you, what they call Philadelphia first. So many things that are a part of the, what you say, uh, fabric of this society. They started here. You know, it was a foundry, you know, from the first hospital, the first post office, the first library, the first utility, you know, the first computer. So many things that, you know, are part of this nation started here. Film industry. We associate Hollywood with the film industry. Film industry started. Motion picture industry started. Philadelphia, you know. So, you know, you, there, there are even websites called Philadelphia First. So I urge your community to even just check that out to get a deeper significance of that. Okay. But I, I, open by, I open the discussion by saying that uh, not only is Philadelphia the spiritual capital of this nation and not only did it represent a reincarnation of the Republic of Rome uh, in the West it also was considered a reincarnation of ancient Babylon and the way they encoded that, the way they encode all of this in their art architecture archetype symbol is City Hall, where City Hall is architecturally designed to be the largest Babylon mystery temple on planet Earth. And it is a, it's a municipal building. It, or let me back up and even say, we know Babylon it, it did represent an ancient empire, but, you know, the ultimate roots of Babylon go back to Ur, the city of Ur mm -hmm. in Chaldea. And Ur was like considered the first city. And, you know, Babylon as an empire was a empire that ruled through urban design. Okay. So, <clears throat> Uh, when we talk about Urbana and city planning, metropolis, you know, and this whole idea that uh, si the city hall is very important. So Philadelphia City Hall is not just your average skyscraper or average tall building. It's actually... The second is the uh, second largest megalithic structure on planet Earth that is has what they would call a municipal or non-religious use. You know, wow. so it's, it's built like you know Giza or you know many other uh, megalithic temples around the world. There's no be metal beams or girders holding the framework up. There's 88 million. And that's the, they use the specific number because that 88 is a powerful frequency here in Philadelphia. Right. They use 88 million megalithic stones to erect City Hall. Wow. And, uh, it's designed like a temple with concentric courts, you know, the Holy of Holies. You have uh, this really deep scene where you got the four root races of planet Earth, each holding up a column, a barrel, a weight bearing column of, uh, you know, the of Babylon. And each arm, this, this shows you what Babylon is ultimately 
the foundation of Babylon is ultimately built on. Because you got the Native American, the African, European, and the Asian. Each one, each group is holding up its own column. Their arms are interlocked, right? Meaning Babylon promotes like, you know, this like tribal, nationalistic, and in this context, racial identity and then pit one against the other, you know? And literally what would like visualize this, what would make that this Babylon mystery temple fall? If the four central weight bearing columns would give way and symbolically, what would make that give them way? If the four root races unlocked their own arms and reached out to connect with the others. Can you vision that? Oh yeah, that's that's really powerful, man. That's a really beautiful vision. Right. And that's what we're talking about building, man, a brilliant future where, you know, each one of these um indigenous root races you know um come to to join arm in arm like said way you know it's it's a really really important thing and they you know so much of what's happening is like to continue to further the separation and to like keep us locked under those pillars so it's you know it's definitely uh the picture you're painting is a really uh, you know brilliant future for ourselves and I definitely uh, can you know join join with you in that vision bro yeah and I will just seal that with one other reasoning about Philly and Babylon please uh, real quick please yeah uh, uh, okay the, the civil war the north won the civil war by with the industrial might of Philadelphia. Philadelphia, an, an, indu an industrial war machine was birthed in Philadelphia that, you know, grew during the Civil War. After the Civil War, Philadelphia at the centennial of the country, so this is 1876, right? Right. Philadelphia hosted a World's Fair. And what happened was from the end of the Civil War to the industri to the World's Fair, that war machine turned, transformed itself into a commercial global enterprise where they could sell weapons globally, sell clothing and merchandise globally, sell everything globally. That was the thing. Philadelphia had actually grown into what you would call the modern Babylon by this time as a result of uh, kicking in the high production for the Civil War. So After the World's Fair, Philadelphia for about, up until World War II actually, Philadelphia was the modern Babylon globally in terms of being the, you know, global city that produced for the world, you know? Right. Like, you know, the richest man, the richest man in Babylon lived in Philadelphia from the Civil War to World War II. Mm. And that's another history, like I'm putting that out there for your community to check out, because that's a kind of hidden part of Philly. You know, we're in a post-industrial society, so it's hard for us to appreciate Philadelphia's role as being the industrial capital of the world mm. in the late 1800s, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. 
Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Like your your knowledgeability of of you know history and um, you know really you really delve into like some of these things that have been more mysterious to us and that are really hard to figure out. And, you know, um, again, with these different, the, the different statues and the different buildings and, um, you know, unless you really like look into this and study this type of stuff, like you, you're just, you know, left in awe and mystery because there's, there's no way to really, you know, look into it unless you like, you know, you really do your studies. So, um, I really appreciate, you know, this, this information that you're bringing to us because it's, it's ever crucial in this time to start to decipher like the actual stories of what's going on and then how we can, you know, turn that around into a more brilliant future. Well, I, 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 I'm, I think it is synchronistic that I'm find myself here in Philly and this did become what I've ended up studying because of course this wasn't my intention I I didn't go to school thinking yeah I'm going to grow up and study urban geomancy (laughs) (laughs) but uh Philadelphia is only one other city in the whole world that has more public art than Philadelphia and that's Paris France wow yeah Philadelphia has more public art than any other city in the country for sure and uh is only rival globally by Paris France. Mm, wow. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot a lot of things um to look into and to learn from from that city and um so looking forward to re, you know tapping more into your uh literature that you wrote the the great mystery of Philadelphia and you know folks can can find that on your website and just really dive in because um it's it's such a such an interesting history and uh i'm i'm about halfway through the book now and it's it's dense but man it's so mind-blowing you know <laughs> Me too. so now great mystery philadelphia focuses primarily on history mystery and prophecy of philly mm-hmm. uh I, I i wrote a companion called free your mound and your mind will follow okay. that and and that just actually just came out this month man september 9th 9 9 mm-hmm. but uh that is a focus on urban geomancy you know we kind of reverse engineer three cities philadelphia washington dc and richmond virginia okay and look at what like the features of what we would call a well-designed necrogeomantic or urban geomantic city and compare those cities to that and attempt to do it in a way that it can be used as a guide uh, to help one reverse engineer or decode where they are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what I was doing in Denver. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't really, it was only when I started to look at each one of the different symbols and, you know, the, it was like a, a Liberty Bell, like a um, replica of the Liberty Bell. Yes. There, there was a statue of uh, Christopher Columbus that was like this, this dude that was separated into four parts and he was like pointing in the four directions. And there was a, like a a globe or like a almost like a 3d sphere circle around him and he was like standing in the middle with his arms stretched to the four directions and it was almost like saying like you know how they how babylon had like um has control over you know all four directions and every you know every direction on earth yes and then it reads you know how about how he was you know a hero and uh, you know, all his uh, mighty full contributions to society, you know, <laughs> mm. it's just like the stuff is just like so crazy. And when you really, really like, you know, uh, read it for what it is, man, it, it's just like, it's so right up in your face. Like they literally have to tell us what they're doing. Like they, that's the only way they can 
like energetically get away with it is through this, you know, telling of the story through the muses. Exactly. Nice, man. Well, I'm I'm really looking forward to getting uh, free your mound and your mind will follow. That's that's exciting for me. As soon as I get through with uh, Great Mystery Philly, we'll move on to that one. And then you also you've been really busy, man. You've been really uh, activated, and uh, this this another the ne- next publication you have is Five um, G Wellness One Hundred One. And in that book, you kind of highlight how we can thrive in electro-polluted environments by utilizing crystals and sacred stones. Um, will, will you explain a little bit uh, more about the detrimental effects of 5G and kind of like what we're facing? Yes. So, you know, five, when, they, when you say 5G, you're talking about that fifth generation wireless technology. And... Uh, Currently, we're in that 4G reality, okay? First generation was, you know, just cell phone. 2G was talk and text. 3G was talk, text, internet. 4G, an expansion of that with, you know, just broader bandwidth. So 5G is a continuation of this emergence with the internet, with wireless communication. It's culminating what they call the internet of things. So they plan on everything having a radio frequency ID, uh, your whole home being a quote-unquote smart home where every electronic gadget's communicating with itself and all of that occurring in these smart cities where everything is, you know, tracked all bought everything bought and sold you know and including us with these uh you know how they're requiring everybody get this real id coming up you know that's a part of this 5g rollout as well uh so the long and the short of it this next generation of cell phone wireless internet technology is going to inundate the environment with a whole lot more things broadcasting, you know? So they're changing up the antenna design where all of the other generations of cell phones operated on cell towers. And we now think about this, that, yeah, the design of, 5G cell towers is going to make us wish for the old ones. Because <laughs> the old ones were built to be high above our landscape so that they could have a broad broadcast range. You know what I mean? But these new antenna, because of the different spectrum 5G is planning to broadcast on, they have to create the, the spectrum they plan on broadcasting on. The, the signal doesn't travel far, even if the towers are high up. So what they plan on doing is just putting the antenna more part of the landscape, more part of the cityscape, and they need a lot more of them. So, you know, these things are going to be, as opposed to, you know, a tall tower, which may have been placed on top of a high rise or on top of a something, you know, high above us. Now it's going to be on a lamp post, a traffic light, you know, and they're going to need to have the projection is to have about one tower for about every 12 homes in an urban environment. So you could do the math on that. How many of that will be on your block? How many towers? That's a lot. (laughs) That's a lot. Yeah, man. You know, especially if you live in a densely populated area with row homes, you know, that's, that's pretty deep, you know? So, uh, that's, you know, a big difference with the 5G. Beyond that, the, uh, field strength, 
most people want a strong field strength or signal strength, you know, because without a strong signal, you get drop calls, static, all of that, you know, but it's your field strength or signal strength that has the most devitalizing uh, potential. You know, in other words, like a stronger field strength, it's, yeah, that it's going to be canceling your vitality quicker, you know? And we've seen, like, because, right, we've all lived, if, if you're listening to this podcast, more than likely you spent your whole life in a sea of artificial radio frequencies. So what's the difference between analog TV frequencies, FM frequencies, and 4G, the, the signal strength, the field strength, you know, the stronger it is. Like FM radio didn't give us headaches. FM radio didn't make us feel like we need to go to sleep after we was on the radio, listen to the radio for an hour. You know what I mean? If you had that cell phone up on you for an hour straight, no protection. When you're done, man, you might be done. You know what I mean? Yeah, so... 5G's field strength is going to be the strongest yet. Wow. And, and they're all... Oh, go up. Uh, yeah, I just I just want to say that's like really excellent information. I mean, you know, uh, and how they kind of just like shorten it to 5G, like they just want to give you the bare minimal information about like what's going down and how it's going to really affect us. So it's like it's really important to be able to understand, you know, how like this, this bandwidth or the, these frequencies, um, you know, are interacting with us on a, like really uh, on an invisible level. Like we don't, we can't see, touch, taste, or feel <laughs> electromagnetic energy unless we get shocked. But with this, it's just like something that's pervading um, the, the EMF, the natural EMFs around us. So um, I'm curious about, you know, if you could just share with us, because, uh, you know, in your new book, you, of course, go into the depths of how to, you know, really um, not only just combat these energies, but transmute them and like um, return them to like vital life force energies. So um, can you tell us a little bit about like what crystals could be effective uh, using, you know, or, or just different effective methods of using crystals um, that will benefit the transmutation of 5G. Well, one thing to counteract that stronger field signal would be to magnetize. You got to stay magnetized. So we can use paramagnetic stones, which tend to be either the iron family, you know, like... Uh, Garnet, iron silicates, or pyrite, iron sulfide, hematite, iron oxide, uh, or mokis, you know, another iron silicate. Also, the silicates themselves, they tend to be paramagnetic, you know. Paramagnetic meaning they got a subtle magnetic field. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we also may have if if we're in a environment with the field strength is real strong you may have to work with commercial magnets you know like the hematite magnets neodymodium magnets uh i would just say learn about magnetic polarity and you know be wise with the commercial magnets but i do think that they're a vital resource against the 5g also, what's called the feldspar family or the carbon silicates, which we could say generally are the energy filters, you know, going to filter out unwanted energy. Uh, and those are moonstone, numite, amazonite, and labradorite or spectralite. Those are like four uh, go-to felt bars, you know? Okay. Yeah, that's that's definitely very uh, 
very great information. And those, <clears throat> all these stones that you mentioned are all pretty easily accessible. So, you know, most, most big cities have some, some, you know, form of uh, crystal shop where you can tap into these, even if you just find them in like a bead form or something like that um, sure. to have them, you know, you wear them in, in your jewelry and um, wear them in rings and, you know, keep them, you know, close to your, your, your uh, person so that as you're being bombarded with these frequencies, you have like, you know, like, essentially crystal shields that are going to help, you know, block out and filter some of uh, these frequencies. What do you think about uh, Shungite as far as, um, you know, it, its effects with, with EMF? Because there's a lot of, you know, talk about uh, Shungite being a very, one of the most important crystals uh, for, you know, filtering some of these uh, frequencies. Yeah, Shungite is amazing, man. It's uh, it's like I'm the the wonders of Shungite never cease. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the more I learn about it, you know, and do experiments with it, you know, mm. uh, and I do think it holds a lot of protective potential. But I'll say for me, my personal experience with Shungite, I can't wear a lot of it. If, I, if I'm wearing Shungite daily, it's got to be a little piece. And, I, and even over time, I, I, I can't wear it all day, every day, you know? Yeah. And I don't know if it's that it's too much energy or if because it's such a powerful absorber of energy that it's even absorbing some of mine i'm not really sure but i i like having shungite in my environment i like uh like doing experiments with it you know do you, you use it in the water? I'm oh, I'm interested about the experiments for sure. And then, you know, are you using water in your experimentation? I have done shungite water. I got to get some more really high quality elite shungite mm -hmm. uh, to come again with that. But yes, I have worked with the shungite water and, and, and love that. It makes your water naturally alkaline and, and just kind of alive, you know? Yeah. It almost like, uh, it almost restructures the water because the fullerenes that are there, you know, one of the main reasons why this carbon based stone is such a, a amazing uh, filtration stone is these fullerenes. And when you look at fullerenes, they're like little like buckyballs or like perfect geometrical, spiracles that are like they have all these multi-faceted like plates or faces and the, these uh fullerenes are like um they're like hollow spheres that can absorb the you know absorb the, the frequencies but the actual structure of them is like um you know super advanced like um you know some of the things that like buck mr fuller was working with yeah like what i what I would say I, I can say I've observed with Shungite is there, but it's not there. Mm. You know, that's why it offers no resistance to uh, anything going through it, you know? It's there, but because the way the molecules are energetically, it's not there. It's like an energetic, invisible material. You know, and then even when you write how Buckminster Fuller created the geodesic dome, and this was supposed to be something that when you built it, it would just become one with the environment. You know, it offered no resistance to the wind. It naturally contoured with the earth and the fractal nature of, uh, you know, forest or whatever other natural environment it would be in it would just fit in as if it wasn't there 
you know? And, and those geodesic domes being a molecular representation of a shungite molecule on a, you know, grander scale, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but I, I definitely recommend getting as much shungite as you can. And my feeling is it's not going to be around long, you know, mm. coming out of just one location as hot as it is. And with this 5G reality, when people get up on it, I can't see, you know, and I'm sure you've observed it too, where something will appear like an abundance. You go to them gym shows, you see it everywhere. And it'll be like that for two or three seasons. You go back next one more season, bam, it's like it never existed. Mm. Or it's super high priced, you know? Go from getting it from the kilo to getting it by the gram, you know? <laughs> yeah, get it while it's hot for sure, man. That's, uh, you know, something that I definitely um, will tap into as I continue to revisit these gym shows and, you know, so people can get at get at me if they want to uh, have a piece of shungite, you know, for themselves to help filter some of these vibes. Um, Ross Ben, do you have any uh, events or offerings or anything else you'd like to share with the listener? Uh, man, I'm in my turtle shell right now, Bridget. <laughs> you know? I, I am doing local events here in Philly, but it's just kind of like as they pop up. I am going to uh, a lot. I've been getting a lot of demand for tours. But, so I'm just going to set it up where you can just order a tour, schedule a tour with me. But I don't, I, I've learned like if I try to schedule a tour, it's like herding cats, you know? It don't work. But if you got a group, you're here in Philly, I'm going to set it up where, you know, you can choose between one of three tours. Uh, do that. I got a next book I'm working on. But I don't know. The nature of the times, I haven't really been inspired to travel as much. And yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling like it's a time to be grounded in your home and family. And that's really what I, that's what I'm doing. So rossben.com is my link for my works. Look for our next publication coming out on the Dogon before the year is out. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at, you know? Nice, man. Well, uh, I I really hope you enjoy that time with your family and just building on that, you know, building on your um, connection with with the family unit, man. It's such a crucial thing because, like, if we can't build there, we're definitely not going to be able to work on a on a you know mass level, a mass scale. So, you know, it's it's very important to start start right at home, you know, that's and right. uh, and build out from there. That's right, you know. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend folks to check out some of these publications, really all of these publications that Brother Ross Ben is um, coming forward with. And I'm excited about the new Togon book. Yes. Sounds awesome. Yeah, man. All right, brother. Well, thanks for joining us today, man. We appreciate your time. And I hear I can... Becca came on, go out with us, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. Give me thanks and praise, bro. Thanks for listening, Tribe. Please take a moment to subscribe to the Ancient Future Technologies podcast and head over to our website at CosmicRootsCreations.com where you can amplify your journey with free guided meditations as well as innovative crystal synergy tools, copper pyramid portals, online trainings, and other innovative ancient future technology signing out from the apex of the pyramid it's your host ankara akiru wholeness balance and vibrations